The Senate has resolved to investigate an allegation of infraction in the appointment of a new Director General for the National Youth Service Corps, the NYC. A point of order raised by Senator Dino Melaye questioned the appointment of a new NYC DG by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai. Senator Melaye quotes the act setting up the NYC as granting powers solely to the President for the appointment of the DG of the NYC. In a statement on April the 26th, signed by the Army spokesperson, Colonel Sigir Musa, the Nigerian Army had directed Brigadier General Shraibu Ibrahim to take over from Major General Sule Kazari as a new NYC DG. Surprisingly, Mr. President, the Chief of Army Staff, through signal, removed the Director General of NYC and through signal appointed his replacement. Mr. President, the Armed Forces Act did not in any way empower any other person to appoint the Director General of NYC other than the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This Senate is also aware that previous Director Generals of the NYC, including the immediate past um, uh, DG was appointed by President Muhammad Buhari and former presidents of this country. We, Nigeria is not a banana republic and we should not allow a constitutional country that is governed by laws and legislation to be taken for granted. If we allow this tomorrow, Mr. President, you will be surprised the announcement of the removal of the senior president can come from road safety and its replacement by the same institution. And that's all from Abuja. It's back to you, Amarachi. Thanks a lot, Malpe. And it's time now for business news. Here's Melinda Akilami. Hey, thanks, Amarachi. Welcome to business news. The Director General of the Bureau for Public Enterprises, Mr. Alex Oko, and the Technical Committee of the National Council on Privatization have announced Transco Power Consortium as the winner for the financial bid for the privatization of Afam Power PLC, priced as 105 billion naira. He told journalists after the opening of the bid in Abuja that Quest Electricity also won the bid for the Yola Electricity Distribution Company with an offer of 19 billion naira. A total of 617 billion naira has been distributed to the federal, state and local governments as allocations for the month of March. After the meeting of the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee in Abuja, the Accountant General of the Federation, Mr. Idris Ahmed, says gross statutory revenue for the month stands at 446 billion naira, showing a decrease of about 31.1 billion naira compared to the amount generated in February. He adds that the balance of the nation's excess crude account stands at $183 million. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has advised leaders in sub-Saharan Africa to create 8 million jobs annually to address the continent's unemployment challenges. The IMF director in charge of Africa, Mr. Selesi Abebe, who was speaking at the launch of the Regional Economic Outlook for Sub-Saharan Region in Abuja, explains that economic growth in the region has remained slow owing to weak policies, conflicts, and environmental challenges. Another challenge the fund once addressed is the rising debt stock. The final trading day of April ends deeper in the red as more profit-taking hits key components of the industrial and consumer goods sector of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And Edidong has those details for us right now. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The negative trend continued into the last trading day in the month of April as the domestic bust witnessed huge sell-offs across major sectors. Now the All Share Index tumbled this time by 1.22% with the equity capitalization falling into the 10 trillion naira level. The Industrial Goods Council was the major contributor to today's losses as the index was down 3.19%. The consumer goods sector was also down 0.67%. 
On the flip side, the oil and gas, insurance and banking sectors closed the day in the positive territory. Now, today's session saw a massive turnover as over 500 million shares worth 8.19 billion naira were exchanged in 4,682 deals. Shares of CCNN, FBN Holdings and Unilever were the most actively traded for the day. And that's Tuesday's trading at the Nigerian equities market. I'm Edi Diong Iwang. Back to you, Melinda. And that's business news. It's back to you, Amarachi. Thanks, Melinda. For providing excellent leadership in various fields, as well as their exemplary contributions to society, some outstanding personalities have been honored at the annual Euro Knowledge Leadership Awards. The distinguished lineup includes Marina Litvinenko, a widow of Alexander Litvinenko, the murdered Russian intelligence officer, Nigerian billionaire and philanthropist, Sir Kessington Adebutu, and the chairman CEO of Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo. Your knowledge is a strategic communications and consultancy group and a trust advisor to many of the world's leading businesses, governments, and financial institutions. Our London correspondent, Juliana Olainka, reports. Vision, exemplary leadership, and making a significant contribution to society. Just a few of the long list of achievements that have been made by the recipients of the Distinguished Euro Knowledge Leadership Awards. The beneficiaries and their guests had flown in from all corners of the world, including Africa, America and the Middle East. Following a private tour of the house, the group took part in high-level roundtable discussions. His Excellency Mr. Zulfulkar Gadiali, CEO of the Royal Office Abu Dhabi, was one of the main speakers. Um, your knowledge is basically uh, a platform where you get to meet uh, people from diverse, um, different regions of the world, diverse backgrounds. And um, for us, even in the Royal Office, the impetus and the importance right now is for um, Africa and uh, utilizing its uh, most important resource, which is the human resource. As there are varying issues surrounding a lack of trust and transparency amongst many world leaders today, we asked the gathering, what are the qualities that make up a strong leader? It's been for us to, to uh, be our brother's keepers. Uh, there's need for us to help each other. There's need for leaders to make sure that uh, we, we take people out of the rungs, you know, of, of the low-level situation that they found themselves. I respect all our leaders, and I love all of them. I don't know why others don't love them. When leaders go through the run of the mill, they have leadership qualities that tend to be respected. Prominent names awarded on the day included Ethiopian Airlines, Marina Litvinenko, Sir Kensington Adebukola Adebutu, and Mr. John Momo, Chairman, Channels Media Group. John has been a leader forever, for as long as I can remember. And uh, we're both very active in the Chivin Alumni Association of Nigeria, where he has shown a lot of leadership for all of us. Euro Knowledge Chairman Dr. Alex Eichin, President and CEO of Kairos Development, was delighted at the gathering of such a diverse, esteemed group. If people wouldn't divide people for Jewish, for Arab, for Russian, for American, it's only cultural. We have common goal to have a better future. To have a better future, we have to change yourself, be kind. Don't lie, don't cheat, and think about not only yourself, about society. Juliana Olayinka, Channels Television News. Authorities in Venezuela say recent action by opposition leader Juan, Juan Guaido could be described as a coup attempt on the government of President Nicolas Maduro. And this comes after a video showing Mr. Guaido flanked by uniformed men was released. Let's get a wrap of international news. Simon Pusey is standing by with Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Venezuela's opposition leader Juan Guaido is calling for a military uprising as part of his final phase to oust President Nicolas Maduro. Bueno, de Venezuela, muy buenos días.
Flanked by soldiers, he posted a video promising the end of the regime and called on the heroes of the army to stand with the opposition during a mass protest tomorrow. Also with him was the opposition politician Leopoldo Lopez, who's supposed to be under house arrest. The video was taken near the La Carlotta Air Force Base in Caracas, where tear gas was later fired at the crowd. The government says it's confronting a small group of military traitors seeking to promote a coup. Guaido is urging Venezuelans to support him on the streets in a show of non-violent force, saying it'll be the largest march in the country's history. It is a very important moment for Venezuela, and as you can see, we are in the process. People are going to continue arriving. Military units who are on the side of the Constitution are going to be arriving. We invite the world to witness what is going to happen here, which, as always, is within the parameters of the Constitution, democratic, and non-violent. The United States believes terrorist groups may be planning more attacks. It follows the deadly Easter Sunday bombings in Sri Lanka that claimed over 250 lives. Security forces are on high alert following reports that militants are preparing another assault before the start of the holy month of Ramadan. We do believe that there is active plotting underway and we have warned U.S. citizens and then of course others who might read our warnings uh, to uh, be mindful of, of places that might make attractive targets for terrorists. The Democratic Republic of Congo has experienced its worst day so far in the current Ebola outbreak. The country registered a one-day record of 27 new confirmed cases on Sunday, raising last week's total to 126, the most since the epidemic was declared last August. It's the second worst outbreak in the DRC's history, with the virus killing more than 900 people to date. North Korea's foreign minister has warned the United States faces undesired consequences if it fails to change its position on denuclearization talks. The second summit in Vietnam collapsed after the two leaders failed to agree on the extent of economic sanctions relief. Kim Jong-un says he'll only meet President Trump again if Washington shows more flexibility by the end of this year. In Beijing, talks have recommenced between the states and China as the world's two largest economies work to end their trade war. The U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says he hopes to make substantial progress with Chinese negotiators during the next two rounds of meetings. President Trump has sued two banks in an attempt to block them from handing over his financial records to Congress. Three of his eldest children and the Trump Organization joined the lawsuit against Deutsche Bank and Capital One, arguing there are no legitimate grounds to investigate his business affairs. Riots erupted in Honduras as protesters demonstrated against the controversial president Juan Orlando Hernandez. Rocks were hurled at police who then responded with tear gas. The violence comes amid reports the president is planning to privatize education and health in the country. Japan's emperor has declared his abdication. <laughs> In his last public address as emperor, Akihito handed over the symbols of power and thanked the public for its support during his 30-year reign. The 85-year-old says he felt unable to fulfill his role because of his age and declining health. He's the first Japanese monarch to stand down in more than 200 years. Crown Prince Naruhito will ascend the throne on Wednesday. Parts of northern China were plunged into darkness during a huge sandstorm. Visibility dropped to less than five meters in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, forcing many people to stay indoors. Whipped up by strong winds, it's thought the wall of sand was around 100 meters high at its peak. And finally, the Indian Army is facing some ridicule after claiming it's found evidence of a yeti. Mountaineers came across footprints in the snow, which measured 32 inches by 15 inches while on expedition in the Himalayas. There is no hard scientific proof that the giant ape-like creature exists, but the myth retains a strong appeal among locals in the region. The Army tweeted the images to its nearly 6 million followers, adding to the legend of the abominable snowman. And that's your international news around the world in five.